how to use some of the electrical meters that we will be using this year. In this video we're going to cover three different meters. The first we're going to look at is the analog DC voltmeter, so that's DC direct current voltmeter. We're also going to look at the analog DC ammeter, which looks very similar but is a different device. And then finally we are going to cover the basics of using a digital multimeter. For the purposes of this demonstration of the DC voltmeter, I have set up a very simple circuit here with a 9 volt battery hooked up to a 9 volt battery connector. The positive terminal runs through the red wire into this Christmas bulb that has been repurposed back into the black wire and back to the battery to complete our circuit. Now, we've also hooked up the DC voltmeter to be full of glare. Here is the voltmeter and you can see I have a couple of wires with banana plugs plugged into the voltmeter and we should hopefully be able to get a reading off of this thing. So, when working with a voltmeter, you should know that you always hook it up in parallel to the element that you want to measure. In this case, we want to measure the voltage drop across the light bulb. So I'm going to take the other ends of my banana plug wire. I'm going to make sure that the wire I have hooked up to the positive red terminal gets connected to the red side of my circuit and that the common or the negative side wire is going to get hooked up to the black or to the negative towards the negative side of the battery. This is to make sure we get an actual reading off of the voltmeter and we should be able to see there and when I make this connection in parallel you can see that the meter goes up and reach just over six volts. That looks like seven and a half and then about 6.2, 6.3 volts. Now, we could try to get a more precise measure by going to the other scale, but unfortunately we have too much voltage to try to make that measurement. If I wanted to do that, I would have to change batteries, which I will do and demonstrate how the other scale reads. All right, we're now back and I have replaced the 9 volt battery with this constant voltage power supply which has an adjustable power supply. I currently have it set to 3.3 volts and we can see that the light bulb is in fact glowing and when I take my wires here which are hooked up to the voltmeter and we connect those in. Actually, I'm simply going to connect them directly to the power supply. This will give us a reading of the voltage drop across the power supply. And as I zoom in on the reading, I still have it set to the up to 15 volt scale. So when we actually look, we see that it's reading off at just under 3 volts, which is a little bit less than the advertised reading by the device. And if I click it up to 4.5 volts, we should see that, yes, in fact, the voltage does increase. But you notice it's kind of difficult to read because there isn't a whole lot of resolution here. The each large division is 3 volts, which means the intermediate division is 1.5, but we're not even breaking 3 volts. So what I'm going to do is adjust, instead of plugging into the 0 to 15, I'm going to plug into the 0 to 5. And we see now that the reading, it looks much higher, but in fact it's telling us the same thing, just with a much higher resolution. And we can see now that we're between 2 and 3, that the large division is an entire volt, which means the intermediate division is one half a volt, which means that our very small denominations are worth one tenth of a volt each. So if we zoom right in there, what we can actually see is that the voltage reading is approximately 2.75, maybe 2.8 volts. It's a little bit wavery back and forth there. 
but we can get a much better resolution if we choose to go to the finer scale. We can do that because we are only putting less than five volts across the voltmeter. So to review a voltmeter, we want to begin measuring at the largest scale. Once we're certain that we are not producing more voltage than the smaller scale can read, we change over to the smaller, more refined scale so that we can get a more precise reading. We make sure that we are connected in parallel to the element which we want to measure. In this case, I am measuring across the power supply. I could alternately measure the voltage drop across the light bulb. So we hook ourselves up in parallel to the light bulb as opposed to series, which we will see here in a moment. We are now going to look at proper use of an ammeter. So as you can see as I zoom in here, we have a DC ammeter. It is currently set in the zero to five amps position. And we are not running a whole lot of current here as we try to read this thing. You can see that we are in the zero to five. So we're going to read the top scale, which has a large gradation of one which means the intermediate size is one half and each of the small ticks is worth 0.1. So we're looking at a current, if we get in proper position to read this, of about 0.1, um, difficult to read with the camera, about 0.15 DC amps. So this is quite challenging to read in this setting and we'll look at what to do with that in a moment. But the larger point of this is how do I properly set up an ammeter? If we look to our power supply, which we have set up, the current flows out of the red side through the resistor, which is a light bulb in this case, through the other leg into this red wire, which goes around into the red five setting on the ammeter through the circuitry of the ammeter, out through the black wire, at which point it returns to the other side of the, the voltage supply, giving us our complete circuit. This is what is called a series circuit because there is only one path for the current to follow and it goes in a continuous loop. Ammeters, because they measure the amount of current passing through a branch of a circuit, must be set up in series. You cannot measure the current if you're not in the current to measure it. Okay, so that is the key that we want to see here. Ammeters go in series, they measure the current through a branch of a circuit. In this very simple series circuit, we have only one branch, so there isn't a whole lot of variation. Now, to these two scales. This would be a great candidate for going to a more refined scale. We have a very small current, so if we switch from the 5 up to 5 amp setting down to the 1 amp setting, we see that our gauge moves quite appreciably. In this position, the large division is from 0 to 0 0.2, which makes the intermediate size division 0.1, and each of the small ticks 0 0.02 amps. This is a much more reasonable thing to attempt to read. So, as we do it, there's 0.1 in the middle, and we are 1, 2, almost 3 ticks beyond that. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.12, 0 0.14, almost 0.16, so we would call it about 0.158 amps. So you can see by going into this setting, we can get a much finer resolution.